rainy weather and the Saturday morning. I really appreciate that you came here <clears throat> to join us for the assembly, uh, which is dedicated to the decolonial movements um, and I would say processes that are going on in contemporary Europe. The first, the, I just wanted to mention this idea to, have to, to dedicate this date to the decoloniality belongs to Studio Arizona. And um, uh, the first part of this program took place already even earlier in the morning at, uh, at Museum de Civilita and was dedicated to the relationships between, between Europe and Africa. And now this second part, which will be quite long, which will last for five hours, will be dedicated to the, I would say, much uh, lesser known history of colonialism, of colonialism, which is the colonialism of Russian Federation. And um, we call this assembly uh, the colonial war in Europe. Uh, we, we call it the colonial to uh, stress that, as I believe, this war is not only a tragedy, uh, which, he, which it is, but also a histor historical chance uh, to fight against the very long history of Russian colonialism and uh, a chance for a different future for Ukraine, for Europe, but also for many other people who have been oppressed by, uh, colonized and oppressed by Russia for centuries and whose history is unfortunately is very, um, is almost unknown in the West, in the Europe. Uh, and I think it's a really precious chance for today, today to know more about uh, these dark uh, spots in our common knowledge. And uh, also we call this uh, assembly the colonial war in Europe to stress that uh, despite the images that we see every day in media shows us uh, violence and atrocities in Ukraine, and it creates probably uh, the feeling or impression that this um, violence is, uh, this, let's say, as many people say, problem localized in certain territory, but I believe it's not true, and this war uh, has a much global significance than just the relationships between Russia and Ukraine, and we'll speak today a lot about this. Uh, yes, and I think it's also important to understand for all of us that this war that is taken, that is going on in Ukraine now is, uh, is a colonial war, actually. A colonial war which with a colonial goals which is uh, which aims to seize the new territories in order to explore the sources of these territories as well as people and uh, the if you follow the news you probably know that the russian politics at the occupied territories the politics over the people who live in these territories it's uh, uh, given just two options either to be exterminated uh, physically or to be exterminated as a political or cultural or economical subject and be turned to the slaves, to also to the very source uh, of this colonial imperial power. Uh, and uh, also I wanted to, uh, to say that this uh, war of uh, excessive, and I would even say uh, abundant violence, uh, is possible basically for two reasons. First uh, of which is uh, centuries and centuries of the imperialist politics by Russian Federation and its colonial centuries of colonial wars, many of which has been successful and enabled to expand its territory at this enormously huge scale, where most of the people who live at these territories are exploited just for the sake of uh, profit of a small group. And this uh, politic of extractivism, exploitation, and expansion is exactly what enabled uh, this 
ex excessive accumulation of wealth, which are now spent for the further expansion and further violence against Ukraine in this case. And the um, second reason why this war is possible is because Russia is not alone in, in this endeavor. It has its enemies. We know, I think a lot of you know about the Iranian drones that is killing Ukrainian people, but it's not it's just mostly the most visible trace. There are many other gestures, political decisions, actions um, that uh, make it possible for Russia to keep this war going despite of its numerous defeats uh, and despite that it is not like it's less and less supported by the people who live in Russia but uh, it's important to understand that again despite the impression that it is something localized in certain territory which is actually a global conflict which involves uh, many other subjects not only Ukraine and Russia and of course it is important to understand that this uh, resistance of Ukraine against much bigger and much more powerful state is possible also because of the international solidarity. Um, and um, today's uh, assembly, I think it's another, uh, another step in enhancing this international solidarity uh, in the current situation, which I think is extremely important. And I'm happy to, uh, to uh, to be able to, to create this chance for all of us, for me in particular, to know uh, more about the actually the roots of this war. Because I know that many people in the West believe that there is a conflict between uh, Russia and NATO, let's say, one of the theories. But I, to, uh, I think that today's conversation will show you that the history of Russian imperialism is much, much longer than the existence of NATO, actually. And uh, I'm really happy that today you will meet the people who has uh, also long history of a struggle against, against Russian colonialism and imperialism. The struggle which unfortunately has been ignored or invisible for, the, for many of us, for, for, for Europe, for, for the West, for the world in general. And uh, the struggle was invisible uh, along with this oppression uh, that took place for centuries at the territories which now belongs to the Russian Federation that almost uh, also was invisible and ignored by many of us. So I think I'm really happy that we had this chance today to expand our knowledge and our understanding of this situation that captures our attention during recent year. And uh, I'm happy to introduce you the first event in this assembly, the uh, panel discussion which it's called uh, The Colonizing Russia, Forgotten Histories and Expected Futures, which will be moderated by Amir Stufulin, who is a guest fellow at Biblioteca Hatisiana, art historian and visual culture researcher. And uh, the guest of these panels, which I'm really proud to have here, is an uh, activist of uh, liberation movements of the people, uh, of the colonized peoples of Russian Federation, or maybe better to say people colonized the Russian Federation. Rajana Dugarde Ponte, a leader of Burat uh, Liberation Movement, Ruslan Kabas, a leader of Bashkir Liberation Movement, and uh, Rafis Kashapov, a leader of Tatar Tatarstan uh, Liberation Movement, Independence Movement. So I now give the floor to Amir, and he will uh, introduce you more the topic of this specific discussion and tell you more about the participants. Thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, my gratitude to uh, Lesa, but also the teams and workers of the European Pavilion and Rebuild Institute for this opportunity. Um, it's my honor and privilege to moderate today's discussion, Decolonizing Russia, Forgotten Histories and Expected Futures. I hope it will highlight the first and, and the forgotten histories and outline the second, the expected futures and foremost will give the voice to the existential struggle of the indigenous people living on the lands bearing today the misleading name of Russian territories against centuries-long violent oppression and colonization. To give you a little bit of historical context, um, uh, since somehow since around the uh, 16th century, and uh, ongoing various people of the area stretching from the Caucasus to Siberia have been victims of the Muscovite state under different names. 
in settler colonial policies have been extracting cultural and natural wealth from those people and lands. Just to name those who presented today in today's discussion, see that the Tatars since uh, 1552 have been subjugated to the Moscow, to, to Moscow, uh, the Bashkirs since 1556, and uh, the Buryats since 1660. The oppression is ongoing, this events have not has not yet ended, and in 2014 Moscow set its eyes once again on Ukraine. Today's conversation on decolonizing Russia takes place here in Rome, but it is happening because elsewhere in Ukraine, peoples of Ukraine collectively struggle against colonial invasion of Russia. Since its beginning in 2014, Russia's war on Ukraine has been a colonial and imperialist war, and Ukrainian resistance has been an anti-colonial and anti-imperialist resistance. The coloniality of the Russian war is reflected not only on the choice of who it intends to subjugate this time, but also on the deliberate choice of who the state sends to die. From the first day of the war up to the mobilization, proportionally to the number of population, it is predominantly indigenous people who are sent first to the front lines, leaving empty whole rural communities where many indigenous peoples reside, which is a form of ethnic cleansing happening today. The war launched in the name of Russian world is fought with blood of people who have historically suffered most from it, and it is not the war in their name, it is not the war in our name. Hence, in order to stop Russian invasion, it is paramount to support armed resistance of Ukraine. Conversely, in order to hold the oppression of Russian imperialism in Russia and beyond, now and in future, it is paramount for the empire to die, for Russian state to break up, and let the people colonized by it to finally self-organize and self-govern. Franz Fanon wrote, Imperialism leaves behind germs of rot, which we must clinically detect and remove from our land, but from our minds as well. Following on on this, it is my appeal on you, arm Ukraine, but also be conscious of the struggle of the indigenous people within Russia. And it is for the latter that I'm honored uh, to give word uh, to the, some of the leading activists of the indigenous uh, decolonial struggle um, uh, who was who were already been introduced by Lesa, uh, but I say once more, uh, Rafis uh, Kashapov, uh, my left, so the founder of the Free Ural Movement and the Deputy Prime Minister of the self-proclaimed Tatar government in exile. To my right, Rajana Ducar de Ponte, one of the leaders of the Buryat National Movement. And um, finally, to my left, co-founder of the League of Free Nation, um, I'm sorry, also co-founder of the Free Nation Movement, and Ruslan Gabasov, head of the Bashkir National Political Center. And um, many thanks also for Sasha for being here, for translating this. Thank you very much. And maybe now um, I could ask you to um, make a brief uh, introduction to what uh, is your movement uh, about right now in your own words, if possible. Uh, maybe starting with Rafis. Thank you very much. I literally to speak English, sorry. Uh, uh, his thanks uh, and excuses for little knowledge of English, so he'll switch to Russian. Yeah, 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 Premier Minister из Германии Татар, за рубежом. Наша глава живет в Ильмирзайл, США, Америки. Он из Германии министра в Северпроклеме Татарстан Республик, и он главный организации, он живет в Ильмирзайл, США, Америки. В Ильмирзайл, США. За последнее время мы создали в Укра... Украине э, свободный мир Урал. Позже было создано э, э, в Варшаве, тоже с участием украинцев, было создано э, форум свободных народов пост России. And later in Warsaw, they created the Forum of Free Nations uh, in post-Russian. 
а уже еще позже была создана Лига Свободных Наций. Вот Руслан, вот мой район представляем, я представляю Татар, Руслан Башкир, Бурят Джаранов представляет, вот мы трое представителей находимся здесь. Огромное спасибо за то, что вы встречаете нас в таком в теплом времени. And so uh, they also, those three people, created the Free uh, Nations League, and uh, uh, they represent Tatars, Basque, Bashkirs, and Burak peoples, and they are really thankful for the warm welcome in Rome. Сегодня, как мы видим, весь мир видит и осуждает, как э, в Украине российские войска уничтожают украинцев, не только украинцев, разрушаются города. Четыреста семьдесят лет назад наше татарское казанское ханство вообще в таком же формате было уничтожено, но уже больше, больше э, последствиями убийствами. Мы в России, казанские татары, занимаем второе место после русских по численности. Казан татарс take second place by the population in Russian Federation. Однако Несмотря на это, хотя мы многомиллионные татары э, находимся в пространстве Евроазии, в России, э, уничтожается наша идентичность, наш язык, культура, религии, обычаи э, нашего народа, татарского народа. Although millions of Tatars inhabit the territory of Eurasia, their identity and culture uh, is being killed and destroyed. Hello? Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Rajana Dukar de Ponte, and uh, I am a representative of the Buryat Mongolian uh, Democratic Movement Erkheten, uh, which means people are the champions of the law of, of the right of peoples. Uh, and um, I am also a member of the Free Nations League and um, this organization um, was created shortly after the start of this horrible war and uh, it unites representatives of uh, Bashkirs, Kalmyks, Buryats, Tatars, Saha, Yakut, Chechens, uh, Ichkeria, Cossacks, Kalmyks, Uh, and uh, also a re a regionalist movements such as uh, in Germanlandian movement. And um, the uh, reason for us to come together uh, was that uh, we decided that this is enough. We had enough of Russian imperialism, uh, we have enough of being uh, colonies, Uh, that are uh, denied our right to exist, uh, uh, that uh, are denied our right to speak our languages. And um, we decided that only coming together, being united, we have this uh, opportunity to finally get our sovereignty and independence. Uh, because being together, it is, uh, it will be extremely difficult uh, for the Central state to uh, subjugate us again, and uh, we have this uh, legend um, in uh, this secret history of Mongols, and this similar legend actually exists with every people. The uh, forefather of the 
golden king of Chinggis Khan, Alan Gua, once uh, brought together her sons who were fighting with each other. And she gave each of them a little twig, and she told them to break the twig. And the children could do it easily. Then she gave them two twigs and three twigs, and they were still able to break. And then she gave each of them a bunch of them, and they were unable to break those twigs. And so she uh, taught them a lesson, and she said, you need to stick together, and no one will uh, be able to defeat you. And that's what we are, we are doing now. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Меня зовут Руслан Карпасов. Я являюсь руководителем Башкирского национального политического центра. Hello, my name is Ruslan Kavasov. I'm the leader of Bashkirsky Political Center. Также в прошлом я был один, одним из основателей Башкирской организации под названием Башкорт, которую признали экстремистской на территории Российской Федерации и запретили российские власти. Also, I'm a former founder of organization Bashkort, which was proclaimed as extremist in Russia and condemned, so its activities prohibited. Наш башкирский народ практически полвек, полтысячелетия находится в составе Российской империи и постоянно подвергается дискриминации, ассимиляции, геноциду и так далее. Our Bashkir people is almost 500 years is included into the Russian Empire and uh, it is constantly under the process of assimilation genocide. Наш народ является по численности больше, чем такой народ европейский, как латыши, как эстонцы, допустим. Но о нас практически не знают. Если взять, допустим, татар, то их больше, чем и эстонцев, и латышей, и литовцев вместе взятых. Однако вы эти народы знаете, а наших народов практически не знаете. Our population exceeds, for instance, the population of Latvia or Estonia. And, for instance, the population of Tatars is more than the population of Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania all together. But you, like, Europeans are largely familiar with Lithuanian and Latvian culture, but knows hardly anything about our people. Сегодня Россия, Российская империя, я ее называю империей, она ведет самую настоящую агрессивную войну против Украины. Today, Russian Empire, I call it Russian Empire, is leading an aggressive war on Ukraine. Совершая тем, таким образом геноцид, но она одновременно России делает два геноцида. По один по отношению к украинскому народу, а другой геноцид по отношению к коренным колонизированным народам Российской Федерации. Сегодня уже ни для кого не секрет, что э, войска российской армии не, не, э, не пропорциональны большинству именно представителей военнослужащих из коренных народов, таких как буряты, башкиры, татары, чеченцы и так далее. Их больше, чем пропорциональности, больше, чем русских. Бурят, татар, башкир, чечен is much larger than the proportion of Russian people. The army involved in war in Ukraine. И таким образом они уничтожают нашу пассионарную часть мужского населения. Нас и так мало, а нас еще больше уничтожают. This way they are killing the active pessimist part of our population, although it is not big at all even without that. Мы башкиры раньше воевали, поднимали восстание, чтобы освободиться от этой империи. Наш народ больше двухсот лет поднимал восстание. 
Bashkirs uh, for almost 200 years used to at make attempts of revolt against colonization. Thank you very much for this introduction. Um, I just uh, was uh, thinking, I wanted to ask you uh, a question relating to, I guess, political imaginary um, imagination. Um, obviously, this is not the reality right now that uh, there's an opportunity to self govern and self determine. But uh, what kind of uh, future would you um, imagine um, in, 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 in this movement um, and when this? Мы казанские татары, есть еще крымские татары, но мы казанские татары в свое время в пространстве Евразии создавали Касымские ханства, Сибирские ханства, Астраханские ханства, Казанские. Мы были в семействе тюркских народов. Мы, казанские татары, государство, образующее народ. We Kazan Tatars, it is important to know there there is also Crimean Tatar population. Yeah, we created our milieu uh, using uh, in uh, Kasimska Kazanat, Cyber Kazanat, Astrakhan Kazanat, Kazan Kazanat. So it was like the group of Turk population. Мы общественники, мы общественные политические деятели уже давно ведем работу. Создать свои независимые государства в пространстве России. Мы хотим, чтобы Россия как империя развалился. Yeah. We've been not struggling to create uh, an independent uh, government uh, inside uh, Russia. Russia as an empire has to be destroyed. Мы также хотим, чтобы у татар, у Шуаш, у Утмурту, Башкир, у Бурятов, у Чеченцев, очень многие народы, когда на данное время колонизируют, чтобы они создали свое независимое государство, чтобы они жили свободно, как живут народы государства в пространстве Европы, которые дружат сотрудничают и у них э, культуры, экономические, э, э, религиозные, у них идет э, такое дружелюбное, хрепкое э, отношение, что было, э, и э, после развала Российской империи, чтобы и все народы, которые на данное время колонизированы, чтобы так же, как жили европейцы. Okay, so the Chuvash people, Udmur people, Bashkir people, Buryat people, Chechen people, and all other colonized people managed to have their independent states and organize a friendly commonwealth as Europeans have. Yeah, so uh, with economical, social, and cultural relationships, friendship yeah, among all those people. Thank you. Я считаю, я также очень много башкир, которые сегодня проживают на территории Республики Башкорстан, и вообще все наше башкирское национальное движение, мы считаем, что мы достойны жить в своем собственном независимом государстве. Have right to live in our independent state. Россия, будучи являясь в свое время Российской империей, потом Советским Союзом и Российской развалилась несколько раз. Сперва при Российской империи отсоединились Польша, Польша и Финляндия. При Советском Союзе отсоединилось 15 республик, которые сегодня обрели независимость. Мы ничем не хуже их. И мы тоже так же хотим, мы надеемся, что Российская империя, потому что по-другому это, она, по это она империя, а, она не федерация никакая, она тоже за, закончится и развалится, и все народы обретут свободу. So, uh, Russian Empire has undergone several stages of ruination during its history. First of all, like parts of Poland and Finland, 
separated from it um, uh, after the collapse of Russian Empire in 1917. Then after the collapse of the uh, USSR, more than 15 republics got independence and we are, no, we are also lost that. We are not like uh, worse than them. Uh, and uh, so uh, Russian Empire is empire, it's not a federation. And it will come to end finally. Однако в будущее мы понимаем, что у нас очень тесные, скажем так, взаимоотношения между народами различными, между русскими и другими народами. Поэтому мы что предлагаем? Мы предлагаем сперва дать нам независимость, а потом уже мы, возможно, если мы захотим, все вместе собравшись, обсудив это, создать что-то по типу Евросоюза. Как, как вы же сейчас живете, возможно, с, с безтаможенными границами, с единой какой-то валютой, э, с союзом наших армий. Okay, so, first of all, we need to get independency, yeah, but afterwards probably we can uh, organize a union, like European, some sort of like European Union, with no internal borders, with similar um, currency, etc., and army, but uh, it takes time. Еще я бы хотел бы заметить, что помимо национальных республик есть еще такое, как регионалистическое движение. Uh, apart from national republics, there is also a regionalist movement. Uh, допустим, есть такие, uh, у, был опыт отделения попытки образования своих республик, как Уральская республика, Ингерманландская республика, Сибирская республика. У них у всех uh, когда-то в свое время были попытки образования своей собственной государственности. So, uh... There were some republics inside uh, the Russian Federation uh, that attempted to uh, get their own independence, like Ural Republic, Ingerman Republic, Sibir Republic. Uh, и поэтому вот уже сказал Раджана Ракис о том, что существует Лига Свободных Наций, куда входят перечисленные народы, но туда входят также как и регионалистические движения. И одна из наших задач также, чтобы именно Россия развалилась и по э, регионам, которые тоже тоже обрели бы свою субъектность в своей республике, чтобы были Московская республика, чтобы была Южная республика, Казакия, э, чтобы была э, Сибирская республика и так далее. Uh, so, um, as uh, it has been already said, uh, we organized uh, uh, Free Nation League and uh, uh, it also includes regional movements and we want that all regions get uh, their independency, like Moscow, uh, Republic uh, and so on and so forth. Потому что вот для вас, возможно, это кажется как-то странно, да, или там невозможно, фантастически. Но возьмем английскую Великобританию, Великобританскую империю. Сейчас есть Канада, сейчас есть Австралия, сейчас есть Новая Зеландия. И они прекрасно живут сами по себе, являясь канадцами, австралийцами и так далее. So it might seem odd to you, but uh, we can have a look at the experience of the United Kingdom yeah, and uh, oh, the countries like Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand uh, that are largely independent and uh, living the near best. Ну и последнее, я хочу сказать, что вы должны все понимать, что Россия, если она останется такой, какой сейчас есть, она вновь станет империей, даже если сейчас придут к власти либералы условные, никто не дает гарантии, что через 10-20 через через лет она снова, вновь не станет империей и вновь не начнет свою агрессивную войну против других свободных народов. It is very important to understand that even if liberal government comes up into power uh, in the future in Russia, uh, it doesn't mean that in uh, 20 years it will uh, become an empire again and attempt to occupy um, uh, other independent territories. И последнее. Поэтому единственная надежда на то, чтобы избавиться от вот этого агрессивного монстра под названием 
Российской империи – это дезинтегрировать ее на 30-40 независимых демократических государств. So uh, the only way to get rid of uh, this monster as Russia is to, to disintegrate it into 30-40 independent states. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, very uh, gloomy, uh, gloomy images are being uh, presented to the uh, imagination of the people, especially by the uh, so-called, as we said, we mentioned uh, before, Russian liberals such as Mikhail Khodorkovsky, uh, for example, uh, who say uh, who say that you know. You need to actually support our idea of Russia. It should be a democratic Russian, Russia true federation where uh, like rights, human rights um, are valued and so on. But, um, and they say that, you know, if you don't support us, then Russia will disintegrate and there will be chaos there will be anarchy, uh, there will be, uh, you know, gangs. It's like uh, they are saying, you know, practically, we are talking about some post-apocalyptic scenario of Mad Max, uh, you know, universe. And uh, we are saying that this is not true. Uh, I think that if Russia prevails, it will eventually become such post-apocalyptic universe. It needs to be destroyed because uh, it's, there's nothing really to cling to. There's nothing to value in this uh, huge empire. And this horrible war <coughs> is showing the true nature of this empire. So it needs to be destroyed and new democratic states need to appear on its place. It's the only way. And we have uh, actually good examples of how uh, those countries that were able to gain independence after the uh, uh, end of the Soviet Union, like Baltic states, like Ukraine, uh, Moldova, uh, we have also in the East, uh, the example of Mongolia, that is called uh, actually a, a paradise, democratic paradise. Uh, so it's, it's, we, we should not really think that Preserving Russia, we would gain anything. Because Russia was not able to build democratic societies. So they have nothing to really offer us. We need to uh, learn from those nations that were able to build democratic societies. And that's the only uh, way out that I see. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, just to follow up on, you, on what you said, um, unfortunately, it's not only um, uh, well the people uh, living in Moscow, and uh, I mean those in the power, particularly who um, are afraid of this disintegration, but of course uh, the West is uh, a fe fear uh, fears to lose uh, its. Uh, Re, uh, it's access to resources and extraction, and those resources are used now to fund the war. And um, I think it's also a very important point when we speak about self-determination of, uh, of various uh, peoples, uh, that um, it's also um, the lands on which upon the leaf and the resources uh, and the natural wealth that um, is, would be then um, something that is not Moscow controls and redistributes in the world, but those people can um, um, deal with, so to say, and maybe also not see them as just commodities. Um, but um, I wanted to um, 
maybe um, ask you uh, something about um, when you when you speak about uh, the national liberation movements. <clears throat> Obviously, there's this word of national, uh, which is uh, quite loaded uh, and um, has different uh, meanings. And I think also in the West, sometimes uh, it, it has a deliberately um, negative connotations. But also, uh, Russian state uses as a um, excuse for uh, launching the war on Ukraine. Um, so. Um, how, how would you uh, would you um, explain what, what you what you mean by the word national uh, in the sentence um, and upon which ground kind of sense of belonging um, would be constructed? What about the intertwined histories of many people who live on this land and also for sometimes Russian people? Um, and uh, yes, this is the question I got right. Огромное спасибо за этот нужный, нужный вопрос для нас, для представителей колонизированных народов. Я защищаю, я защищаю в Татарстане права татарского народа, в том числе защищая тюрков в России, в том числе я защищаю украинцев, критиковал президента Путина. Thank you for such an important uh, question. Uh, when I was defending the rights uh, of uh, in Tatarstan, I also defended the rights of Turks people and Ukrainian people, and uh, um, I was manifesting and declaring against President Vladimir Putin. Я писал статьи, даже организовал протестные акции, митинги. Uh, в Турции в том числе, uh, также других государствах uh, и в Татарстане. Uh, Путин я сравнил с Адольфом Гитлером. За это я получил три года тюрьмы, uh, из этих три года я полтора года сидел один в камере. So I organized uh, gatherings, protest gatherings uh, in different countries, namely in Turkey and uh, there I compared uh, Putin with Adolf Hitler and uh, after that I uh, was imprisoned for three years and uh, out of uh, the three years I spent uh, one, uh, one and a half year I was uh, in solo, incarcerated like uh, personally. На данное время я живу в Англии, но э, очень жаль то, что историю э, колонизированных народов России э, очень плохо знают европейцы. Вот недавно я посмотрел исторический фильм в Англии. Там э, э, даже исторический документальный фильм предоставляет такой, э, своим зрителям, э, как будто Казанский хан, Астраханский э, все ханства, бывшие ханства, как будто это э, территории э, Чингисхана. Типа как русские завоевали э, э, Чингисханские, монгольские территории. А на самом деле, вот мы татары, поморские татары, мы бугры татары. Э, жаль, что, что европейцы не знают э, историю э, колонизировав народов России. Now I live in the United Kingdom, and uh, I was recently I've recently uh, seen a documentary, historical film, and um, it proved that Europeans have little knowledge of the history of colonized people in the territory of Russia, because there they presented uh, this history as if uh, all uh, Khans uh, were uh, the territory of Chinggis Khan, and uh, it's, it's actually not true, and uh, those were uh, independent subjects, and uh, uh, and uh, it shouldn't be presented like that. Yeah, Europeans should know more about uh, history of colonized people. Огромное спасибо сегодня, сегодня то, что участникам, вам всем и организаторам 
мы такие площадки во всех странах Европы должны провести, должны провести именно представители Конвенции народов, чтобы объяснить, в чем суть, имперская сущность преступного режима Путина. Yeah, well, I'm really thankful for the organizers for creating such a platform for the discussion and such platforms should be organized in all European countries to uh, demonstrate their evil and crime essence of uh, Putin regime. Thank you very much. For me, it's interesting that you are liberals, democrats. What is more important for you, resources or the lives of thousands of people? I'm asking you as liberals, democrats, what do you value more? Resources or lives of millions of people? Do you fear to lose the opportunity to sit in the cold in the winter? чтобы у вас было тепло, газ был, а мы исчезаем, вы поймите это. You're afraid of getting cold uh, during the winter because uh, gas shortage and we are afraid of extinction. Yes, we get that. Чтобы вы понимали, о чем идет речь, я вам скажу так, что, допустим, башкиры, одна треть башкир, это полтора миллиона народа, не знает на сегодняшний день своего родного языка и считает свой родной язык русским. Yeah, uh, to for you to make a picture, uh, one third of Bashkir people don't speak their native language, and they believe that Russian is their native language. Чтобы понимали представление масштаба до ассимиляции этих процессов, пять из пяти миллионов татар Российской Федерации один миллион не знает своего языка. One million of uh, People they don't know the mother tongue. Мы исчезаем, а над нами проходит ассимиляционный лингвист, лингвоцит. Мы называем лингвоцит, когда идет уничтожение нашего языка. We call it linguicide when the destruction of our language is taking place. Помимо этого, мы теряем в численности. Допустим, за перепись между 2002 и 2010 годом нас почти стало на 80, почти почти на 90 тысяч стало меньше. Yeah, so our population is also decreasing uh, uh, between 2002 and 2010, almost uh, 90,000 people less were uh, listed uh, during uh, the population register. Наших лидеров, национальных лидеров сажают в тюрьмы. Айрадий Мухаммедов, один из лидеров Башкирского национального движения, сейчас сидит, ему дали 9 лет только за то, что он говорил о федерализме. У нас нет политических партий, которые бы на республиканских или региональных политических партий, чтобы отстаивали свои интересы перед Москвой. Их просто запретили. We have no political party that would have stand for our interests. We were abandoned and prohibited. Нам насаждают из Москвы глав. Мы не сами выбираем. Нам их ставят. Our heads are being appointed in Moscow. It's not the people that we choose to rule in our territories. Поэтому, когда люди в Европе боятся слова национализм или национальное какое-то движение, для нас вы должны понять, что это слово соотносится с патриотизмом. So when people in Europe are afraid of the word nationalism, you need to understand that for us it sounds like patriotism. Иначе по-другому мы просто исчезнем. И вы должны нас понимать, что мы боремся за свое выживание. Uh, it is actually true that for nations that are colonized, the only 
remedy to overcome the wounds of the trauma and to gain sovereignty, first of all, to uh, decolonize themselves is nationalism. And it's not uh, that nationalism is something bad, something, um, it's like, you know, a, a disease that, you know, some uh, one needs to get rid of as soon as possible. Uh, I think that Europe already is past this stage and we are only getting there. We are only trying to find our own grounds and uh, we are not against Russians, for example, because in uh, Buryatia, I know a lot of people, Russians, my friends, who are actually supporting the struggle. They support us and they also think that it's, it's going to be better for everyone in Buryatia if we gain independence. Uh, in Siberia, uh, there are, for example, uh, Siberian regionalists. There are also regionalists in the Far East. And during uh, anti-Putin's protests several years ago, there were uh, slogans uh, saying that you know we don't need Moscow. We should not. We should stop feeding Moscow. And uh, it's uh, it's this, it's a distinct feature. Uh, the, this uh, Russian, so-called Russian Federation, is actually a very superficial, uh, superficial structure, and uh, it is only uh, there was a documentary actually uh, shot uh, at the beginning of the 2000s uh, saying uh, oil, and um, it's, it was about Siberia sending oil and all the resources to Moscow and getting nothing, even, not even decent roads. There is, it's impossible to travel uh, from some parts of you know, Siberia because there are no roads. And even uh, air, uh, by air it is impossible. For example, there was uh, uh, my, my friend from Saha in Kutia, uh, they needed to go to Magadan, which is really not that far from Yakutsk. And it was so expensive to fly from Yakutsk to Magadan, it made more sense to fly to Moscow and then from Moscow to Magadan. That's, that, that's what is Russian Federation, really. It's like it, no communication between regions, no ties, because this corrupt government, the corrupt government only think about how they can, you know, uh, get more and more and more wealth and leaving those regions with nothing. Uh, that's why I think that uh, this question of, you know, uh, when, when people are afraid that somehow there will be uh, ethnic cleansing in this nation, in this new nation states, it's really it doesn't uh, have really grounds because in Buryatia, Russians are the majority. And it's impossible for the minority that Buryats are, and we only like 30% of the population, to do any of the, those things, right? So it's, it's, not about, it's not about it. You wanted to answer a few words on that one? Также я хотел добавить, что по поводу, когда говорили о ресурсах, о том, что Европа там, переживает, с кем она будет торговать ресурсами и так далее. Я хочу сказать, что все эти ресурсы, о которых вы говорите, газ, нефть, золото, медь, цинк и так далее, все это находится в наших республиках национальных. Это у нас все. И Москва выкачивает из нас, торгуя с вами, отнимая у нас. So... When uh, we were talking about the fear of trading uh, the resources with whom uh, will Europeans trade the resources in the future if uh, Russia disappears, it is important to understand that all the resources, all things uh, and so on and so forth are located in our uh, states, in our regions and uh, uh, Moscow is just draining us uh, of these resources. 
В Москве вообще нет никаких ресурсов. Она живет за счет нас, за счет нас. И мы, будучи независимыми и свободными государствами, мы могли бы с вами напрямую торговать, минуя вот эту прокладку под названием Москва. So, uh, Moscow basically has no resources, and uh, we, as independent states, could be trading directly uh, without this uh, like, uh, part, as uh, an unimportant part called Moscow. Насчет ресурсов хочу сказать, Республик Татарстан, Москву каждый год отправляет. 870 миллиардов рублей в федеральный центр. So, uh, about the resources, uh, I want to say that uh, Tatarstan is sending um, 870 million rubles a year to, uh, every year to Moscow. Я присоединяюсь к предложению Руслану. Действительно, мы напрямую можем в Европу идти, отправить свои нефть, газ и другие природные ресурсы. Yeah, uh, I join Ruslan that we can directly send natural resources to Europe. Еще я хочу сказать, и это уже будет мое последнее выступление сегодня. Европейцы, в том числе тут и итальянцы, вот насчет оппозиционеров думают, что они действительно радикальные оппозиции, которые выступают против Путина. Я именно хочу сказать насчет Ходорковска. Навайнера, Каспарова. Yeah, uh, so uh, Europeans, Italians in particular, are thinking uh, that opposition in Russia, or real opposition, I'm talking about Navalny, Khodorkovsky, and uh, Kasparov. Да, действительно, они оппозиционеры, но они рвутся к власти. Если они приведут к власти, они uh, будут номер, uh, номер uh, Путина номер два. Они же будут, будут такими же э, имперсами, когда э, Путин завоевал, э, отобрал Крым, э, когда российские вошло, войска вошли в Грузию, также когда участвуют э, в Сирии, в других э, мировых э, 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 других государствах, когда э, вооруженные силы участвуют э, против э, оккупации. Они никогда не осуждали Путина, а значит они имперцы. But basically, although they are seeing the Portuguese Putin, but all they are doing is struggle for power. When they get this power, they will be the same imperialists. Because whenever, when Russia annexed Crimea, when Russia invaded Georgia, when Russia started participating and bombing Syria, they said no word against that. Когда-то я дружил с Каспаровым, Ходорковским, Навальным, даже проводили совместные форумы, протестные акции, участвовали в разных мероприятиях, но в данное время наши пути разошлись, они уже нам не друзья. Once uh, I used to be friends with Khodorkovsky, uh, Navalny, Kasparov used to make uh, uh, common forums and platforms, but our uh, ways parted since that time. We are not friends anymore. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much. Um, also, I just wanted to make a quick uh, intervention if someone from the audience uh, would like to ask something and has a particular question, uh, please just raise the hand. Uh, I think it's all good. Um, my question would be related to something that uh, uh, Rosanna was saying before, um, and uh, Rafis as well, about uh, uh, the world side, right? Um, I, one, for example, personally, I'm one of the these Tatars who um, countless Tatars who, um, uh, whose uh, native language is Russian, uh, although I am from a Russian family, I'm uh, from a Tatar family and spoke Tatar until I was two, so it is happening. And um, the question would be that I have is uh, uh, related to cultural policies, and since this event also happens within the framework of uh, it has sort of to do with culture, I just wondered um, what does the cultural um, 
politics of resistance mean and what they, they do within this uh, time when in Russia it is clearly um, not possible to, or very hard to, to conduct political uh, resistance and political activism that is, uh, is prohibited because one is sent to prison immediately if uh, not worse. So um, is culture maybe something where preserving of language and um, uh, habits and, and, and uh, cultural production and work uh, still relevant or is it something that is secondary to the political struggle? I just wonder about that. Спасибо за интересный вопрос. Я вот а, хочу сказать, что на сегодняшний день а, из на сегодняшний день из а, наших культур сделали, знаете, вот оставили только фольклор. Мы а, создали из наших а, республик, из национальных а, наших народов какие-то фольклорные ансамбли, которые танцуют, поют и пляшут на потеху приезжающим высоким гостям из Москвы. Our culture has been turned into largely into folklore, and uh, our republics are represented by ensembles and groups that are singing and dancing to please uh, the guests from Moscow. Это вот то, что нужно москвичам. Когда говорят о высокой культуре какой-то настоящей то я вам хочу вот такой привести пример, что, допустим, у нас недавно сняли с репертуара спектакль, который создали башкирские наши драматурги. Uh, so that's what uh, they actually want when it comes to high culture. Uh, uh, I want to tell you one example. Was, uh, there was a play uh, written by a uh, Bashkir uh, author and uh, it was taken out of repertoire of the theater. Там рассказывалась настоящая история о том, как женщина башкирская, которая участвовала в восстании против русских, против Российской империи, ее поймали, осудили, сделали крепостной и насильно крестили. So uh, it tells actually the real story of a woman who participated in the revolts against uh, Russian Empire, and um, she uh, was captured, she uh, was turned into a slave and baptized. She escaped several times, she tried to get back to her uh, native religion, Islam, um, and uh, then they returned her back um, th those several times, and for the last time they just burned her. И вот когда об этом наши башкирские драматурги пытались рассказать, после первого же показа со звонка, по звонку из Москвы этот спектакль сняли как, как спектакль, который разжигает межнациональную родину. So after the first demonstration of this play, there was a call from Moscow, and this play was censored as uh, the one that causes national tensions uh, between the people. Хотя это наша история, понимаете? Если взять об истории, то, допустим, в школе рассказывают. Раньше мы сами выпускали свои учебники истории нашей республики в 90-х годах, сама выпускала, где мы рассказывали настоящую историю. Но сейчас нам запрещено выпускать самим историю. Москва сама изготавливает для нас учебники, либо мы, если пишем учебники, то они проходят цензуру в Москве. И там только то, что нужно для Москвы. They used to be written um, in our republic, but now they are published and written in Moscow. And even if uh, some of local author is written a history, it should be approved in Moscow. And there is only the right version of history uh, from the Moscow point of view that is presented in those books. Поэтому, когда говорится, говоришь о культуре, о никакой развитии культуры не может идти речь. Когда народ угнетается, когда есть цензура, когда запрещено 
вообще говорить правду или то, что было на самом деле в, твоем, в твоей истории твоего народа, никакой культуре невозможно идти речь. There is no way we can talk about culture in such situation when uh, a people is being oppressed, uh, is being censored, and it is impossible to tell the truth about your own history. Culture is irrelevant in such situation. Uh, well, uh, according to the uh, so-called Red Book of uh, ex ex uh, ex ex uh, languages that are uh, disappearing languages, uh, all languages uh, of the peoples that live in the Russian Federation are uh, actually endangered, are endangered. Uh, some languages are already dying languages, some are in a slightly better position, but uh, all but Russian. Uh, and yet the Russian government is doing everything to promote Russian language, uh, not only in Russia, but also abroad, and it spends millions and billions of dollars for that. And right now uh, they are killing people in Ukraine for the sake of Russian language. And uh, also there is a big deal when, uh, uh, when for example, something happens in uh, the Baltic states and uh, there is a, a cry all over media in Russia that uh, you know, Russian language is being um, somehow persecuted in those states. And no one uh, talks about dying languages in Russia. In, um, 2019, on September 10th, 2019, an Udmurt scholar and activist went, um, uh, he came to the central square of Saransk, the capital of Udmurt Republic, and he hold, uh, he, he was, uh, yes, Albert Razin, he was uh, holding a, sl um, a banner and it, it had words on it. If tomorrow my language disappears, I am ready to die today. These were the words of the uh, Dagestani uh, Avar poet Rasul Gamzata. And after that, he uh, set himself on fire. The death, this horrible death of this uh, hero, really, uh, was a shock for every, everyone, everyone in the national republics because we felt for it, because it was what is happening to our languages as well. I'm sorry. This is a, a very emotional <coughs> moment. So uh, this year uh, we commemorated as a league of free nation we commemorated the death of Albert Razin by uh, holding a round table on the um, linguist, lingua side of the languages in the Russian Federation. Also, uh, we went to the um, uh, consulates of the Russian Federation in different countries uh, with flowers and with, uh, with um, uh, his portrait, portrait of Albert Razin and the uh, um, candles to commemorate his memory. Because um, he became a symbol of, uh, a symbol of a resistance, cultural resistance. По поводу культуры и народов, это частейшая диск... идет дискриминация в общем мире народов, не только татар, всех колонизированных народов Российской Федерации. Вот приведу только один пример. Вот Путин уже больше 20 лет у власти, первые 10 лет, когда он правил, еще не было такого жесткого морального, физического уничтожения колонизированных народов. 
put in the, so the 20 years as holding his power and first 10 years were uh, moder moderate uh, and there was no uh, such harsh uh, extinguishing of colonized people. Мы татары имеем тысячелетнюю историю, однако очень для нас трагический момент. Вот уже почти около 10 лет этот центр Казани, Кремль, Кремль не только в Москве, у нас турецкий, татарский, казанский Кремль. Там мы, вот, казанские татары, не можем проводить культурные, общественные, политические, исторические мероприятия в центре Казани. Нам запрещено, но зато русские там, русским давно уже возможность. Если украинцев захватят в Киеве, в центре Киева, украинцы тоже будет запрещено проводить подобные мероприятия. Our history is uh, thousands years long, uh, but still uh, we are uh, denounced of the possibility uh, to hold um, um, any events in our historical center. Uh, there is Kremlin not only in Moscow but in Kazan as well, and uh, all Tatars uh, they cannot. Um, gather there for any cultural, historical, or social events, unlike Russians who are allowed to. And if Russians uh, occupy Kyiv, Ukrainians as well won't be able to have any meetings in Kyiv or whenever. This is uh, strikingly reminds me of a conversation I had a few days ago with uh, Belarusian uh, colleagues uh, and cultural activists mm -hmm. who told me actually that um, it is impossible anymore and prohibited to help uh, to hold um, tour guides in in Minsk in in Belarus in Belarusian language. You ha it's 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 um, you get into prison. Um, so this is um, shows those extension of this logical regime uh, outside of Russia. And of course, this kind of imperialist um, policies that I'm forced now within Russia is with precedent and uh, mirror the imperial histories of, of the European uh, countries um, and <coughs> remind me of uh, this book uh, by Kinin writer uh, uh, Nubugim uh, called The Recognizing Mind where he, he describes this particular tendency of the first they come the soldiers right and the second uh, uh, they colonize you in the school rooms and school boards uh, by uh, taking the language that allows you to relate uh, with others and the environment and the land that you are from. So, um, just, yeah. Uh, I would like to correct myself. I said that he went to in Saras, but it's actually in Jetsk, the capital of Я еще добавил по поводу языка, дискриминации нашего языка, потому что язык это все-таки самый главный идентификатор национальности. В 2017 году Владимир Путин заявил прямо о том, что везде должен изучаться русский язык как государственный язык. Но а, национальные языки государства не должны изучаться а, в обязательном порядке, а только добровольно. Uh, so in 2011 Владимир Путин announced that Russian uh, is, a compul uh, is a compulsory uh, language to uh, is obligatory language to learn, while others home uh, name mother, mother tongues are not uh, so important to be studied in schools. So they don't have it to uh, study. Поэтому в школах сейчас, в национальных башкирских, татарских, удмуртских, бурятских и других школах, везде один час в неделю изучается родной язык государственный и пять часов в неделю русского языка. So every school in those republics have one hour of uh, mother tongue uh, per week versus five hours of Russian language per week in schools. Есть такой предмет, как русская литература. Однако такого предмета, как башкирская литература, нету. И при такой предмет, как русская литература, он обязательный. Uh, there is such discipline as Russian literature, but there is no discipline as Bashkir literature. 
uh, and Russian literature is an obligatory discipline. И последний, последний скажу, что а, нам, а, в первую очередь, моим детям, я бы хотел, чтобы они изучали своих а, писателей, поэтов, башнистов. И только потом а, изучали а, русских писателей, поэтов. Но, однако, нам не дают такого выбора. Uh, and only afterwards those, those Russian poets and writers, but we have no such opportunity. Yeah, and I think this is also something that is reflected also in European uh, knowledge production systems um, that um, Western also, uh, most universities that uh, have, and most universities do have Slavic department, um, they mostly are focusing on Russian language, Russian culture, Uh, there are lack of books, even material available, even within the Slavic departments, on other Slavic languages, as in Ukraine and, and uh, Belarusian, for, for instance. And it's not uh, to speak about, um, of course, the many literatures and cultures of uh, indigenous, indigenous people uh, living in Russia, they are not represented at all. Um, so it's also to think something about how uh, Let's say we or uh, you organize um, this kind of uh, uh, well knowledge production really uh, here um, in Rome and elsewhere. Um, uh, but I want to uh, give what to Selena. You want to ask a question, right, from the audience? Um, I will still with you. First of all, I would like to thank you for. Um, presenting um, your political ideas and your culture. I have to say that I belong to this uh, probably large group of people that did not know um, about your struggles. Um, and uh, yes, thank you for, for uh, being here. And then uh, second, I would like to apologize for a probably very naive question. Um, that comes out of my ignorance. Um, but um, I wondered if we speak, go back to the political aspect of your organization and of your en engagement. When we look at history, it almost never happens that um, a separatist movement um, would not end in a, in a sort of a military conflict, in a war. So I wondered, um, in your vision, how um, how do you think about that, um, and do you have do you have also the hope, or um, yes, let's let's say hope that it could happen without a military conflict, without a, um, a war, and if yes, what? would be your, the, the partners that you need for such a huge political endeavor. In the sense, I, I guess it would be probably Europe, but that's maybe not enough. Uh, maybe um, um, you're seeking uh, alliances in, in Asia and China. So I wonder about the concrete um, political steps that you are taking in order to um, make your vision um, come true. Uh, that's what we are doing in Chile uh, by creating uh, such uh, partnerships as uh, Relations League. Uh, we are uh, creating uh, this future, um, future space, safe space uh, for our nations to uh, coexist peacefully. And um, for example, if we are talking about Buryatia, uh, we have nothing to actually, uh, uh, we, we, uh, well, uh, we, we don't have any claims to like uh, the territory of the two, of the Tuba, of, of Tuba or of Safa Yukutia. There are some, uh, of course, there are some uh, issues uh, about territories sometimes. But uh, it's uh, what is uh, 
uh, if anything arises, then I mean, uh, they can be nego always negotiated. But uh, as I said, uh, really, uh, it's not um, it's it's not about um, it usually, you know, when uh, when you be talk about a separatism, it's like uh, when a, a territory wants to um, uh, um, get get away from some central states. And if we, we if we talk about Russia, uh, we are talking about a failed state right now because it's it is it is failing and it it will be failed a failed state state uh, pretty soon so russia won't have any resources to try and stop any region if they decide to uh, get away and uh, that's why we are also talking about uh, not only republics but also regions because um, I'm from Siberia, and I know that there is no uh, really deep connection of people who live in Siberia to Moscow. It's uh, it's quite superficial with the whole structure, the whole country, and uh, I don't think that there will be any bloodshed after that. We have the example of, uh, uh, for example, uh, the peaceful dissolution of the Soviet Union. And uh, I think that uh, it's not, uh, all these uh, stories about uh, conflicts, they are a thing of the past, really. Татар Башкир, также для uh, тюркских народов uh, России, это самый первый пока союзники Турции, Казахстан, Азербайджан. Они uh, как-то морально, в uh, моральном плане uh, нас поддерживают. Для uh, Рас Татар и Башкир, наши основные партнеры это Азербайджан, Азербайджан и Казахстан. Мы поддерживаем моральный рост. К нам, татарам, обращались несколько раз чеченские лидеры. Давайте мы поможем вам приобрести независимость вооруженным путем. Отправим к вам, татарам, около полторы-две тысячи своих военных. Мы вам поможем приобрести независимость. Мы несколько раз отказались. Uh, we um, used to receive several uh, um, messages from Chechen leaders who um, advised us to like, let's help us. Uh, we, will, uh, we will send you wep weapon uh, military and so you will conquer your freedom with uh, weapon, but we renounced those suggestions. Это будет очень большая массовая кровопролитие по Орской республике. Мы это не хотим. Хотим мирным путем освободиться от империализма, от русского империализма. Я бы хотел бы ответить на ваш вопрос следующим образом. Ход истории невозможно остановить. Россия в любом случае распадется. Yeah. I'd like to answer your question in this way, that there is uh, no, nothing that can stop uh, the flow of history and uh, Russia is going to dissolve. Потому что Россия это классическая империя, а империя они все распадаются в итоге. Because Russia is a classical empire, and all empires are destined to uh, collapse. И вот для того, чтобы на построссийском пространстве не образовалось 20-30 каких-то серых государств по типу ЛНР или ДНР, необходима помощь всего цивилизованного мира. So um, we need the help of the whole civilized world uh, to um, avoid. Uh, creating 20-30 grey uh, states like um, LNR or DNR on Donbass. Yeah, that would be like, very dubious. Европейские, ну и вообще политики всего мира цивилизованного должны обратить внимание на наши национальные движения, 
помочь нам информационно обучить наши политические, признать нашу независимость наших национальных республик. Все сделать для того, чтобы процесс прошел как можно безболезненно, потому что в любом случае он произойдет. So the leaders of the civilized world, they need to recognize uh, our uh, initiative. They need to recognize our national movements, uh, so the, pro the whole process could go painlessly. Well, um, I guess not. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ruslan Rafis, uh, yeah. and Thank you, thank you uh, for this conversation, and, and uh, thank you to the audience uh, for participating, listening. Thank you for um, organizing this lesson, particularly because uh, it is not really obvious to try to do this kind of bridges within uh, the Russian context, so to say, and. Uh, uh, but I think it's, it's important. So thank you and uh, thank you. <coughs> Закончили я хочу, уважаемый Виси Ханом, подарить карту Идель-Урала. He wants to present a map of Идель-Урал to Леся.